Oh. It's full of ants. Oh, folks. How are we going? I'm going to get the shoes off. I'm going to ground myself now because I'm going to lose my mind. I just came up to have a look at these citrus trees because after the last three hot days that we had here, little old me forgot to come out here and water. Well, there's an ant on me now. And what I'm talking about is because there are ants on here. Now, these trees had wilted literally my better half's away doing a course and this is her little area where she I'm just killing ants at the same time folks where she waters and I thought I had my head around the whole garden here you know 10 acres of gardens that we have left right up down to the little island over there courtyard there veggie garden trees in pots in the back corner the list goes on I forgot this area and when I came out here that one there was literally wilted that mandarin tree there completely sitting underneath the conifer how the hell are they getting on my head. That tree there was wilted completely. You can see it's dropped a lot of leaves and I had to soak it, soak it deep. And I, I spent, I was doing 3AW radio that evening. Oh, seriously, stop touching this garden and I won't get ants on me. So, and 8.30 and I think I finished watering about 11 o'clock that night. This area here was a good half an hour of watering. Eight pots, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pots. But I spent a good half an hour filling them up, going to the next one. Problem is, these have been in the felt bags for about four years, going on to five. Yes, they're small. I know. These are dwarf varieties. I think they are. Some of them may be. That one isn't. But the thing is also, they've had a real hard time growing in this environment. I have had a lot of struggles with citrus trees because they aren't suited to this cold sort of climate that we have here and high winds. So they're holding their ground. Oh. We've got mandarins here, look at that. That's what it is, isn't it? Yep. You know, I'm starting to forget what my fruit are. I did a Armenian cucumber yesterday and I forgot what it was. I was asking you guys and after we finished filming, I thought, oh bugger me, that's an Armenian cucumber. Anyway, this is a mandarin. It is full of ants and the ants are coming up down because they're farming the scale. This has been hit by scale. Now, scale doesn't move around. They're like little buttons. They're stuck on. Look, look, the amount of ants on this bloody tree. They, st they stick themselves on the fruit, leaves, and, and branches of the tree, sucking the sap out of it, and in return, feed the lovely ants with the excretion, which is a, a sweet nectar-style sort of soot that they bring out. That's going to get sprayed. I wasn't planning on talking about that, but that's one of the problems that we've got here. The main problem we have, and it stems from there. It stems from the soil. Plants do not, do not get attacked easily by disease or pests when they're healthy, but more importantly, where they're well hydrated. Because without hydration, there's no exchange of nutrients, whether it's micro and macronutrients elements. Without the moisture, they're not going to drink, they're not going to be able to release, and the tree in turn will suffer. And that's what's happened, and they become susceptible to being infected. And in this case here, we've got scale. Now, what's happened to the soil? Well, apart from rabbit poo in here, because they come in here and they dig a hole and they bugger off before the sun comes up, we've got dehydration to hydrophobic soil. <laughs> See that? It's gone completely dry. I didn't mulch this, well, if I did, it's gone. So this was hydrated yesterday really heavily before the 38 degree heat, and I didn't water again afterwards. So today, it's been a day and a bit, it hasn't been watered, it's sucked to the ground, because we've got the Kai Kiyu trying to push through. So these bags, as I mentioned when I first planted them, have a lifespan of about up to five years. That was my guess, and we're not quite there yet, but what I'm gonna do is transplant these into large, and I mean large pots. I haven't picked them yet. I've got to get them and I've got to get them soon so we can transplant them. See all this damage? All this here? It ain't from the ants and it's not from the snails. It's bloody rabbits. They've nearly ring barked this plant. It's got half its bark on that side because right underneath the bark is where the sap flows between the old wood inside and the new bark on the outside. There's a layer in between there which we call the cambium layer and that's where the sap flows up and down freely. And as soon as you damage this, the sap comes up to here, got nowhere to go besides that ant, and it, it, it 
pushes around the other side, I've got to stop touching this tree because they're coming all over me. So the sap has to flow around the other side, providing this bark there. As soon as you take all that bark the way, all the way around off the tree, you've basically killed it from this point up. We're lucky in this respect, the trees bounce back. We've had a bit of die back because of the damage. This is the result from the trunk damage and also being ring barked on the stems as well because the rabbits, they kind of like jumping up a little bit higher. See that there? Another bite from the rabbit. And they come in here, they leave all these wonderful sultanas, dates, their poo, and it breaks down and feeds the plant. But we have got really dry soil on the top. But if I go down deeper, Oh, still dry. It is completely dry. All right, so what we're going to do with this for the short term is drill some holes, feed it, top it up, and soak it. First thing you need to do is prune it back. I didn't bring my secateurs, but that doesn't mean you do the same, all right? Do as I preach, not as I do, because <laughs> I forgot to get them. It's a couple hundred meter walk each way. So cut off all the dead wood, all the damaged wood that's on there, and then we come around. It's moist underneath, you can see the darkness there. So it's holding a bit of moisture at the bottom, which is good. But I'm just putting extra holes in here. Even though the bag, being a felt bag, it allows it to breathe well, it also causes it to dry out quicker, but we still don't get the water porosity that we want traveling through straight away. It may now, even though it looks dry, because I've spent two or three days in a row giving it deep watering, that the water actually penetrates through. It's not as hydrophobic as it was before. But at the end of the day, when I did first come up here, and if I let it go for four or five days, it'll go back to its original state. So we need to replenish and we drill holes and we feed into the holes and then we top dress. And yes, folks, you will cut some of the roots off, off the tree, and that's quite fine as well because it will stunt the growth, reduce its overall pressure that it has to be able to feed all this other part on top by stunting, and also by severing, severing off some of those roots, you'll find new roots will start to develop, those old roots will decay, become a food source, and that life cycle begins again, the composting process begins again. And all we're doing is helping it along and just keeping an upkeep on it. And next we just sprinkle some superfood in each hole. It's not the perfect science because some of the holes have collapsed, but a little bit is better than nothing. Get that into the holes like that. And when we add water, it'll just sink down. Now I did this again. I've done this a lot of times, but more recently I did it with an olive tree that we got in a clay pot and that was pot bound. That's, that was holding water. The hole at the bottom was blocked. It wasn't draining and the roots had become so fibrous and matted inside. It wasn't actually penetrating through the surface as well. And the tree was starting to yellow off. So we drilled extra holes from the bottom of the pot. Not in this case, being felt, we don't need to. And then we did exactly the same. We topped it up with a little bit of superfood like this. You can just throw some over the surface as well if, if you like. And then I just topped it up with our planting mix. Now what I didn't do with the olive tree, and it was something that I need to go back and do, as I need to do with all these trees, is place a layer of mulch over the top. It needs it. It needs it to protect it from the harsh sun. The wind more so. It becomes a blanket. It keeps it cool, keeps it moist and it keeps it stable and it also helps to break down the composting or becomes a food source again because the mulch starts to break down and starts to feed the plants so we've got that cycle going so we've drilled holes superfood the base top dressed it with our planting mix which has got a bit of everything in it look it up on our website what i haven't done is prune back these little branches which is what I've got to do. And then we're going to come back and spray this tree and clean it up. And then we're going to give them a good water like this. And then when I find the pots, we're going to pot them up again. You can see how the water's pulling up a little bit, but that should soak pretty quick. Yep, it's gone. Beautiful. Now, that's the first coat, folks. You've got to give it three coats. If you want that water to penetrate right through, three coats, not one, and walk away. Check out our website, thesillysgarden.com. And folks, 
For those who live in South Australia, don't miss out on the opportunity. On the 18th till the 24th, we're going to have our pop-up in Theberton in the Kennards Hire Place. And if you want to get some great products, go online now and take advantage of the great specials. Uh, so you can select click and collect from Theberton and then we'll meet you next week up in Theberton, South Australia. And maybe we get to go and see some gardens as well. Vasili's Garden.com from me, Vasili, Maresi. Thank you.